Hey everybody, today we're going to make a very, very large portable power station in a very small package. On top of that, the price is going to be even less than you think. This is a furniture dolly. They're between $10 and $15. I think this one came from Harbor Freight, Home Depot, Lowe's, everybody's got them. Uh, and I'm going to use this for the build today. If you watched my previous videos, you know I really like using the upright green furniture dollies from Home Depot. And I like that style, but those are 70 some odd dollars and I wanted to do something on an extreme budget. And something that was a little bit smaller and I think it's going to fit what I'm going to do really well. So we're going to use this as our platform today. For the battery, we're going to use the Watt Cycle 300 Amp Hour Mini. This thing is uh, fairly new on the market and it is absolutely incredible how tiny this thing is, and it's under $500. On top of that, it perfectly fits on top of that furniture cart. Look at that, that's just perfect. Now, if I wanted to go extremely cheap, I would take my little inverter and just Velcro it onto the top, like that. Now, that would work, but this is only a 500 watt inverter, doesn't have a ton of capabilities. It's basically lights, fans, electric blanket. People in the other videos were commenting that this is not enough to run a chest freezer or refrigerator, which I absolutely agree with that. So since this battery is so big, I figured let's go ahead and put something really beefy on top of this to give it enough capacity to actually run large appliances. So that's what we're gonna do. So I've cut this piece of plywood to be the exact width of that furniture cart, which is 18 inches. I'm going to use these little right angle brackets and basically make a mounting plate for this inverter, which is a thousand watt with a 2000 watt peak. And I'm going to do something I very rarely do. I'm going to add a battery level meter off to the side so that way you can see how much capacity you've got left inside the battery. And this is a pretty standard shunt with a screen and then this is a pass through. So I'm gonna mount all this onto the plate, put the plate on the cart, and this will be pretty simple. If I didn't wanna use the battery meter, I could just connect this directly to the battery and I'd be done. But I've got a little bit of space over here, so I'm gonna add this shunt. Okay, so, so negative side goes from the inverter into the shunt and then out to the battery and then positive side goes to the battery. Okay, let me catch you up with where I'm at because I did a bunch of stuff off screen and forgot to uh, turn the video back on. So here's kind of my mounting plate. This is where my inverter is going to go. Uh, and I've got the mounting holes kind of marked out. Uh, this is the uh, shunt pass-through right here. And then I've got little X's marked out where I'm going to put my angle brackets. And I'm going to use bolts for those and then screws to screw it down onto the dolly cart itself. The shunt uses this wiring harness, which is uh, long and rectangular. So I've got a little slit cut right here uh, where I can pop the thing up from the back side. So putting this thing on is actually a big pain in the rear end, but we're just gonna go for it. Now this is gonna sit like that. And then the inverter is going to bolt like that. Okay, so there's the screen, and uh, I'll Velcro that down. I'll use these little wire clips to make a little anchor to hold this in place on the back side. Okay, up here on front, I'm gonna just Velcro the screen down. 
I wish that someone would make this meter with mounting tabs, what I have found over the last couple of months by having these things sitting in my garage, the Velcro will eventually melt and the screen falls down. I wish that someone would make something that actually like hard mounted. And I reached out to the vendors that make this and uh, told them that's what they should do and uh, no one's taken me up on it yet. Okay, so there's the inverter, there's the screen and the shunt. And then you plug in the harness right there. And now I gotta do the wiring. So we go positive to the battery terminal, negative to here, from here to the battery terminal. Okay, so we've got negative from the inverter coming into the negative side of the shunt. And then another negative wire here that's gonna come out to the battery. And then you also have to connect a power lead into this little green terminal right here to power the thing up. So I'm going to jump from here over to here. A little bit of a screwdriver and so it'll get power from, uh, from the wire coming uh, from the battery. And thankfully they give you a little bitty screwdriver because uh, this terminal in here is tiny. I've got these four gauge jumper wires that I made off screen because Watching some of terminals is boring. Um, definitely want to use a four gauge or bigger if you're going to be pulling a thousand watts out of this. So here's the back side. So even though this battery is tiny, it still weighs about 55, 60 pounds. So I can move it around. It's not real fun. <clears throat> and there we go. So I secure it with some cargo straps. And this is way longer than it needs to be. Okay, but now I got some little handles. Wheel this thing around, and let's make our connections. Make sure that that is tight. Hey, look, it's on. So you have to reset the meter because it doesn't know that the battery's charged or not charged. So this is, we have to pull out the manual now. Okay, and now we're at 300 amps, totally full. And here's the front of the inverter. And it's lit up, um, let's put a load in it. Got my little trusty box fan. And I'm pulling 45, 47 watts. Oh, I forgot to reset the current meter. So I'm pulling four amps out of the battery, but I need to reset this back to zero. Okay, press up and hold it down, it'll reset it. So now I'm at 299, let's pull, turn that off. 299 amp hours and I'm pulling 58 watts because you've got inverter losses. So I can run that box fan for 60 hours move that out of the way. I know this red wire is too long, but uh, this is just quick and dirty. So there you go. Rock and rolling. You may notice I haven't talked about charging this thing yet. Okay. Well, everyone wants AC charging and they want solar charging. For a battery this big, solar charging, I don't want to say is practical, but is really, really, really difficult. You've got to take the number of watt hours, in this case, 3,800, and divide by four or five for peak hours of sunlight. That means I've got to have 
like 700 watts of solar to recharge this thing. So I'm not even going to bother talking about solar. You know, in my opinion, this is kind of a sort of a one and done. You know, if you live in an apartment, this would be great. I mean, this should get your refrigerator through two or three days, hopefully, depending upon, you know, how the size of your fridge. So talk about AC charging. So Watt Cycle makes this 20 amp charger. So 300 divided by 20 means 15 hours to recharge it. Um, this is very affordably priced. I think it's about 60 bucks. And it's just got these little ring terminals. So to recharge it, all I have to do is take the battery, uh, these screws off right here from the battery, put these terminals on, screw them back down, and plug it in. If you want to go faster, PowerWorks makes very large DC power supplies. This is a 45 amp. So now we can charge this thing, what is that, six hours or so? So you add some wire jumpers with some ring terminals. Um, this is about 150 bucks, so they're much more expensive than the uh, than the Watt Cycle brand ones. But they are available. If you really want to charge this thing really fast, if you've got a generator and you want to juice this thing up at night, you can go bigger. They make even bigger versions of this. If you want to go even faster, if you want to charge this thing in just a few hours, you can get a bigger one. If you really, really, really want to get into solar, I recommend the Dokio folding solar panels. I've talked about this a lot. This is absolutely not sponsored. I bought this out of my own money. What I like about this is that it comes with a charge controller in this little pouch, and these things are always on sale. So they've got some really, really good sales going on right now, and the fact that they come with the charge controller makes them even cheaper. So you plug the wire into the charge controller. Charge controller has little alligator clips that clamps onto the battery. I know this thing doesn't look real pretty, but at the end of the day, a solar generator, a Jackery, or an EcoFlow, or whatever, it's just a battery with an inverter. So I know this definitely looks like something that you built in your garage, because I did, but if you compare this against an equivalent priced 3,800 watt hour solar generator, those things are thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. This whole thing is easily under a thousand bucks, easily. We've got $200 in the inverter, $60 in the charger, $500 in the battery, 50 bucks worth of wire. I mean, you're in it for well under $1,000. It uses common tools. If you've ever done a car stereo, you can handle this, like really not that difficult. And this is a great way to save a ton of money. If you're in an apartment where you can't have a gas generator, or if you don't want to deal with the noise, this gives you a big, big, big power in a very small package that you can move around. You know, I can pick this thing up and wheel it, but having it on the cart obviously makes it a lot easier to maneuver. So uh, thanks everyone, and we'll see you on the next one.